colors say more than you think. And I'm going to show you how. Ultimately, decisions in business and in life are made by emotions and justified by rationality. You get to build a wardrobe of outfits that sustain a state of competence and flow. The mismatch between colors that she chose and her particular family of colors. Colors say more than you think. And I'm going to show you how. You will discover a couple of mistakes that you may be making that could be keeping you from tapping into your most powerful use of color and getting styled to become a source of freedom and success in your life. Yes, color psychology is real and you can find out about that elsewhere. So I'm not going to discuss it much here except to make one point. Be aware that a lot of what you read about color psychology is culturally bound. So for example, red in the USA and the West can be associated with love, whereas in the Middle East, danger and caution. For those of us who want powerful style, we need to be aware of an aspect of color psychology that is even more important. It is obvious once you see it, but perhaps hidden until you think about it. And that is important because when you miss this, you miss a powerful opportunity to have your style open doors for you. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments about whether what you see today helps you to see something that you didn't have words for before. My client Jenny is a high end business coach who was originally not interested in understanding her colors because she's an original anti corporate. She's a creative maverick in her own words. Then having seen her website and seen some of her home and taken note of the colors that she wore to dress and accessorize, we started talking about the family of colors, warm or cool, that best suit her. And she was curious about the mismatch between colors that she chose and her particular family of colors. And I'll talk about this more in a couple of minutes. As we talked further, we talked about her preference for deep tones. She was looking to understand this and I explained to her why I thought she probably liked deep tones over light tones. Now I try not to presume that I understand a person because there will always be someone who is outside the box and I usually don't have all the facts, but she was fascinated because I was right. So let me show you in more detail the two things that I talked about with her. Take a look at these women and think about what their personalities are probably like. Which group would you say is the more open-minded, if you had to guess? And which group looks more conscientious? Again, if you had to choose one. So which group did you choose, left or right? Now take a look at this collection. Which group looks more extroverted? And which group looks more agreeable? So these four characteristics of openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness are four of the five main ways in which people differ. And this has been established by decades of research. It's written in the ocean model, otherwise known as the big five model. Here I've chosen obvious examples so it really stands out. The main thing that has changed in each of these pairs, as you probably noticed, is the color that the women are wearing. In the openness group, they are wearing lighter colors. And in the conscientious group, they are wearing deeper tones and colors like my client. In the agreeable group, they're wearing soft tones. And in the extroverted group, bright, louder tones. So you can see how color is one aspect of your style that expresses something about your personality. And now you know it consciously rather than subconsciously. But flip this around to someone else's experience as they meet you. They're instantly getting an impression of the core elements of your personality. And it's an impression only. It's a feeling. It's not necessarily conscious, but it's something that is going to drive the way they relate to you. Now, there's two reasons why this is important. Firstly, from a trust and authenticity point of view, because if that impression is off, they later get confused. Then that confusion can lead to bumps in the road as they are not sure about who you really are, because who you are seems to be different to who they thought you were. Secondly, we know that ultimately decisions in business and in life are made by emotions and justified by rationality. So the feeling that people have about you, that emotional subconscious uh, impression and feeling that they get is actually a driving force in your connection with them. That means it can be a mistake to not take control of that narrative as they get a feel about you and what your core personality is like. And this is the light bulb moment that my client Jenny had. When we worked backwards from her color choices, I could show her that I understood aspects of her likely personality. And she was so surprised that I was right. She didn't realize that she was communicating these things about herself. It is really smart to have greater control over the narrative around your personality that you're expressing through your style. It's the most powerful way to dress because it results in being able to carry yourself with complete credibility. When you wear looks that convey your distinctive essence, you enjoy the confidence of feeling congruent inside and out. Dressing in alignment with who you are also means you get to build a wardrobe of outfits that sustain a state of competence and flow because 
Those moments of aggravation and annoyance that are caused by wearing clothes that would be better on someone else are removed from your life and instead you can stay in flow throughout the day to achieve your highest state of competence. Also, dressing in alignment with your personality enables you to take your place at the table with quiet or loud confidence because it's a little known styling secret that style that's aligned with your true self is the style that you carry best. If you want to know how to connect your personality with your style, I can easily give you three guiding lights for the swap of five minutes of your time. You can use these to shape your particular style, including your color choices. So you can take your style in that direction of congruent credibility, competence, flow, and quiet or loud confidence. The link to the five minute quiz is in the description. You'll get three key dimensions you can use to guide your style. They won't directly mention a color concept like bright or muted or particular tones, but you can use those key dimensions to give you direction. For example, they may include words like bold or fun, and you can interpret that for what it could mean for your style. If you want to get to that level of detail where you can see exactly how to bring your style to life, you'll want to get hold of your style synergy type guide. And the second mistake you might be making is wearing colors that don't flatter you at all, the wrong family of colors to start with. It is smart to align your external color choices with your natural palette, your hair, skin, and eyes to create the alignment and harmony that sings your praises. And I have a number of one-to-one -one services in which I give you your perfect colors via my precision color analysis. Please don't redo your wardrobe on the basis of a faulty color analysis from AI. The tools are just not smart enough at this point, And I'm seeing people making all kinds of mistakes by trusting AI based color analysis. I also have an online program in which you discover how to avoid the worst color mistakes you could make. And this program will enable you to build a distinctive wardrobe that will have you feeling outstanding from the boardroom to brunch. And you can apply to join by looking in the description for the words online program. See you again soon.